All right, Jeremy Hazel here from Seven Season Studios, and this comes from our class, The Ultimate Toolmaker's Guide to the Affinity Suite. So if you like what you hear and you want a little bit more, go ahead and check out the link below for a special price for our YouTube family and a special discount on our monthly subscription plan. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, gang, welcome back to Affinity Designer. So this is gonna be the last theoretical lesson on image versus intensity brushes before we get into something meaningful. You have to understand this part because if I show you how to make brushes but you don't know which type to choose, your brush will never perform the way you expect it to. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got my garbage area here, right? This is where I test out all my brushes. And I've got my thousand pixel by thousand pixel workspace. So let's go to the garbage area and I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna undock my brushes tabs so you guys can see it. I'll put it over here on the right hand side and we're still working in the garbage and we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna make a textured intensity brush. Now the question that I wanna answer in this video, what is the difference and when do I choose it? So it depends on which type of brush you're making. Let's make a textured intensity brush first. In your downloads for this lesson, I've included two images. Notice the stroke with the black background. Remember that you use a black background for intensity brushes? Let's double click on that and that'll bring a brush into existence. Now let's go ahead and change this from 64 to 200. Okay, that'll work. Close. And now let's make an image brush. Same exact image, but this time I've got the stroke with the transparent background. Let's double click on this. And now you'll see that it's transparent there. Let's go ahead and bring this up to 200 and close. All right, identical brushes made with identical images. Now let's go ahead and do this. Let's grab our pencil tool. Go wee all the way down there. And now I've got this set to green so you can see this and let's apply this brush. All right, now we've got to move the width of that line back up to 200. All right, there we go. Hey, look at that. All right, let's go ahead and move this over to 200. Forgot how to work my software for a minute. All right, now this is the intensity brush. Let's zoom in and we'll take a good look at this. Now you see how the brush has some good subtle grades in it. Now this little green line up here you can see, this is something I'll talk about here in just a second. I left that in on purpose. Now let's go ahead and we'll duplicate this line. So not only do we have the same image, but now we have the exact same line at the exact same width. And now we'll pop this in to 200. All right, look at how much of a difference there is between one that is done off the color, you see how bright and vibrant that is, versus one that is done off the intensity. Here's how you know which one to pick. If the desire is for your brush to be very opaque and pop and be punchy, I use the image brush. If you want it to really pick up the black and white, the luminosity values and be a little more subtle, I use an intensity brush. That's it folks. That's really the only differentiator. It depends on what behavior you want your brush to have. Notice these were made with the exact same PNGs. All I did was export them so that they worked in their brush type and you get dramatically different effects in an intensity brush versus an image brush. Okay, now let's talk about this little green line here. When you export these brushes, if you don't make sure that you don't have any sort of these little green lines here, these are leftovers from what you did not erase away. So in reality, when I exported this, there was a subtle outline on this brush and it's very present in the downloads here. Let me go ahead and find wherever I stuck these here. 
So if I come over here and I look at the black background, what that is, and when we zoom in real tight over here, watch this. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to move this over. You'll see at home a little line on the outside of this thing here. That is me not taking care when I did my erasing to make sure that all of the lines were really truly gone. So when you're building brushes, if you see these sorts of lines, and the reason I left them in is so that we could talk about this border, you're going to want to go back to your original PNG and make sure that you have done an adequate job of erasing it. These are leftovers from your export. All right, so that's a little bit on when to use each of the brush types. So in the first couple lessons, you learned the differences between an intensity brush and an individual brush. You learned how to export both the types of brushes. You learned when to choose those types of brushes. And you learned a little bit about the different types of vector brushes. Let's go ahead in this one and let's go ahead and create an actual brush. All right, we'll see you the next one.